Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Ramoliotis, aka PD Beats. Hello and welcome to the Pop Turnative Podcast here on Blab. As always, I am your host, Peter Ramoliotis, and on Twitter, I go as PD Beats. This is the podcast where we have digital dialogues in the world of social media, sports, pop culture. And tonight, we're talking about hockey. Specifically, we're talking about women's hockey. And I'm really, really thrilled to have two guests with me this evening. The panel, um, the scheduled guests, unfortunately, uh, due to technical issues, had to postpone. So we're doing a hockey, a women's hockey show tonight. So we have the captain of the Boston Blades in the CWHL and a Olympic gold medalist uh, for Canada in women's hockey in Sochi, Tara Watchhorn is with us. Tara, welcome to Pop Charitative. Thanks for having me. No problem. And it's, it's, it's I guess we'll say long time no see. You know, he was on Pop Charitative a couple of weeks ago, but we have the uh, coach of the year. That's something I didn't mention last time you were on. It's coach of the year in the CWHL and the coach of the Brampton Thunder, Tyler, Coach Tyler Fines is back with us. Tyler, welcome to the show. Welcome back. Thank you very much for having me. So before we were getting settled, we just have to. I just wanted to uh, congratulate Tower on the extension with the Boston Blades. By the way, that that's that's pretty that's pretty crazy. You want to tell us a little bit about that deal and about uh, about your career so far with the Boston Blades? Yeah, I mean, this I'm going into my third year, and this is an exciting. As much as it is a third year extension for me, it, it's a lot of new territory, and I'm really excited because with everything that's happened in women's hockey and the start of the NWHL. This is actually my first time being able to continue on with a team with a core group of players from one year to another. And there's a the great core girls, core group of girls moving forward, and we have a lot of prospects that are interested next year, and we have a good thing going. So I'm really excited to renew my uh, contract with the Blaze and see what happens next year. Got a little bit of a, maybe a rivalry going here. We got a Boston Blaze, and we got the coach of the – it's a pretty unique situation. Tyler, I know you said a lot of great things about women's hockey, you know, the leaders like Tyra Watchhorn. You want to just briefly just talk about, you know, uh, the group uh, that you you uh, you coach and, you know, these leaders uh, in the Canadian Women's Hockey League that you're really fond about? Yeah, since I was a part of the league, I felt really accepted. And, and the minute I met, uh, when I coached the All-Star game, I got to meet all the different players from around the league and how respectful they were and how they carry themselves on and off the ice I mean you couldn't ask for better role models for for young men and young women uh, when they come to the rink uh, obviously like Tara playing for Boston's huge for the US um, and playing you know having playing team Canada being the one you know team Canada member playing down in uh, down the US is clutch and uh, she does a great job she's a heck she's a heck of a player um, and but the other for Brampton obviously having the you know the six players in the team Canada development program is is pretty special and you know when you step on the ice with people representing your country all the time you you can't you can't be happier as a coach doesn't matter if it's men or women so they're just they're great role models and great people and i can't say i can't say enough about them absolutely you mentioned you know sochi and tara i just wanted to talk about that before we get into you know women's hockey and, and the evolution but just talk about you know your journey as you know right now you have it you're a gold medal olympic athlete and you know you must wake up every morning and be like wow you know i have a gold medal that must it must be surreal that that feeling probably never never leaves right it's always going to be there it really doesn't it, and it hits you it hits you in different ways every day um it's something that as long as i've known that a gold medal in women's hockey was a was something you could strive for in our, in our lifetime. It is it is kind of in a way I realized this after making the team. It's influenced every decision that I've made, and it's given me so many opportunities and led me to where I am today. And, and whether it's in who I've met, um, the education I've been able to get, and the countries I've been able to visit, and just the experience and who I am as a person. Thanks a lot to Hockey Canada and just the program and the players we have in this country. It just it hits me in a different way every day. And, Sometimes you forget, but not for very long. Seconds, maybe. Yeah, and it, it, it's we're, we're, we have seen such a, such an evolution of women's hockey, and you know, on Pop Alternative, we're really big fans of, of women's hockey. We had you know Haley Wickenheiser, 
um, Calgary Inferno was on a couple weeks ago. Natalie Spooner has been on the show. Tessa Banana has been on the show as well. So it, it's it's really cool to see. And what I find really interesting about this panel, we'll get into a lot of the specific questions, is we have a coach and we have a player. And we have a coach and a player on different teams. So <laughs> the battle is on right, right here. So before we get into it, let's do something right now. Um, let's talk about your squads. I mean, I, I, I know that, you know, the... Um, the Brampton Thunder started out slow, um, picked it up at the end, and I think that had a lot to do, um, Tyler, with you know you getting the coach of the year. I, I know you're very modest about that, and it was you know the group of girls you had playing the barn each and every night, but you did have something to do with that. Um, uh, just 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 talk about you know that journey and you know playing against teams. Um, a lot of a lot of the strong teams in the CWHL this year, like the Calgary Inferno, who won the Carson Cup. I think like anything, you, you look at it like a professional team, and that's exactly what these women are. And to, to, say, to, and to look at it any other way would be, would be wrong, and you'd be coming into this looking at it the wrong way. Um, they work hard. They show up every day. They expect the same thing, that you know, same dedication that a coach would give their junior or pro team. And, and when you give them that, they respond, and that happens in our systems and our practices. And more importantly, just like any professional team, you need to be prepared. I mean, I we did video every you know we did two or three video sessions a week, one-on-one -on -one phone calls with players. Um, you know, obviously we we've developed a professional playbook. I mean, you know, we we make sure we scout our teams, we scout our players, aka Miss Watchhorn. Uh, <laughs> you know, we 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 know we know who we're playing against, and that was a big key. And obviously, with our leaders in the room and the help of Lori Dupuy, and of course, my assistant coaches were a huge help as well. So just be prepared and and, and treat it like a professional league, because that's exactly what it is, and uh, and you'll get and you'll have success. You gotta watch Watchy. Oh, all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's so sneaky. <laughs> on on day two. Par Tara, sorry, what'd you What's say? That? On day two, normally it's when I like to. <laughs> <laughs> but let's let, let Tara, let's talk about your squad for a little bit. Let's talk about the Blades. I'm a very big fan of Genevieve Lacasse. I think that that's a very good goaltender. And, you know, goaltending, a lot of people are going to argue, is like the backbone of your team, especially in those big games. You saw, you know, um, Delaney Bryan for the Calgary Inferno, who was the MVP, was phenomenal for the Inferno. Having, you know, a goalie um, that can make those big plays, uh, make those big saves, um, do you not find that they are, there's always going to be, even if they don't have a captain on the team, they're like the backbone and the leader of the team no matter what. 100%. And going into this season, um, with everything that happened last season, um, we really weren't sure. And there was a lot of question marks and who we were going to bring in and the level of talent we were going to have. But from from the get-go, me and LaCasse were all in. And knowing that we had her from day one really changed our team's attitude each and every game. Mm -hmm. And if you watch us from the beginning of the season to the end of the season, we competed to the last minute. And a lot of it, you get into the third period and you realize that she's already made 40, 50 saves sometimes. And she just really is, she gets you going in a different way every time. And she's someone who you know will give you a fighting chance no matter what game it is, no matter who you're playing. And really, I've, I've gotten the chance to get her nowhere beyond the Olympic year now and beyond Team Canada and living with her the last two in the same city with her the last two years. She is just a true athlete and a true student of the game. And I have so much respect for her. And I think she's going to be great for our country moving forward. And she's an upstanding person. And not to, to leave the focus away from uh, women's hockey, but you look at like the Stanley Cup playoffs right now, you look at the stories between the pipes of Matt Murray coming in as a rookie. It's almost like a Ken Dryden story. It's Those are like the type of, games that make goalies you look at a guy like cam ward cam ward for many years was a very good goalie had a lot of experience at the international stage as well so i just think about that that's really important as well continuing with goalies because i like this concept of you know the important the backbone tyler you know erica howe is also a very very good goaltender actually from uh she's from 
the same uh, city in, in, in Ottawa, which is from Orleans, where I currently live as well, which I just found out a couple of days ago. Can you just talk about, you know, um, Tara just talked about her perspective with the goaltender, but, you know, how, how much focus was um, the goaltender uh, for the Thunder, especially in that last couple, those last couple of games, getting back into it? Actually, both goalies, you know, really played well for us down the, you know, all year long. I mean, obviously, Erica Howe is a great goaltender. Same with Liz Knox. You know, Liz brings a, a veteran presence to our hockey club that, um, you know, she's the, in my opinion, I think she's the glue in the room. She she really brings it together. She has a bright future in the, in the game, whether it's continuing to play goaltender or, you know, on the coaching side of things. Uh, with Erica, you know, she's obviously a Team Canada goalie. I think she she earned it. She she battled her way onto that team uh, through all odds. Even you know, we and and my coach and I we hold her in high regard. You know, she stopped a lot of pucks for us, and you know, kept us in a lot of the in a lot of games. And same thing with Liz. I mean, you know, we, it worked as a great one-two tandem all year, and it helped us get to the you know the all the wins that we did. And you know, and and when Liz went down, Erica put put everything on her back and she and she mm -hmm. rode that team and she was a huge part of our of our playoff success and in keeping it close with Calgary and you know I know and, and you know what I got both of them back next year so I mean we're uh, we're really strong in that and I couldn't look you know I look forward to dropping the puck with both of them in October and 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 again we'll we'll see how we do with both of them but they're the backbone of our hockey club I, I, absolutely and the one thing I'm, I've 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 uh, I've noticed about you know a lot of the players in the a lot in the Canadian women's hockey that I've met and that I've had on the show and and Tara you're 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 the Zach you are all very modest there there's there's a very like you don't want to you know I mean there I I get the whole I don't want to brag but it's just like some of the accomplishments you know are it's it's just it's unbelievable how just calm and cool and collective a lot of you, a, a lot of, you know, especially the players have won gold medals, you know. I just find it's amazing. I, I, you're so, like, it's, I, do you find that, you know, being humble is an important part and uh, of, you know, um, your game or specifically, like, do, do, you, do you see the connection I'm talking about with, with being humble in women's hockey or am I kind of missing the boat a little bit? Do you know, do you kind of know what I mean a little bit? 100%. And okay, I haven't quite put my finger on it, but um, I think because there, it's two parts. I think because our sport's growing so much, yeah. we're, we're humble to be – it's a different experience, and you're humble to be a part of it, and you know that there's going to be people that are going to take this game so much further than we already have. And you really, we really respect just where we are and hope that in our lifetime, hopefully we get to that real main stage and getting paid for what we do. But at the same time, I can't put my finger on it, having played both boys hockey or guys hockey and women's, there is a bit of a different culture. And you know what? I've struggled with that a little bit in my lifetime, coming from the town of Newcastle to to Pickering, Ontario, playing with women, to then Boston University and now playing in Boston. It's, women's hockey is a very different culture, and we are – you almost – it's not that same – sarcasm in the dressing room sometimes you see with the boys or that same cockiness which is fun in a lot of ways but we really do carry ourselves as professionals um on and off the ice and it's one thing about women's hockey and women's sports that I really respect and that we're going to be successful in a lot of areas of life but one part about the Boston Blades this year that it was a fun dynamic to have and I know uh, I know a lot of girls on the Brampton Thunder too and they two of the teams in Super Bowl very different very same cultures sorry and um, it's one of the closest to men's hockey that I've ever experienced in a dressing room or a group of girls hanging out. And you see a little bit more of that joking around. Girls can take it. And it was really – it was cool. But you really see a very humble um, dynamic in women's hockey and I think in women's sports in general just because we're so appreciative to have the opportunities we do. And we're excited to see our sports moving forward. Mm -hmm. Ty, do you, do you get where, where, where I'm coming from, though, with the whole – um, being like women's hockey, the humble, modest. The, does that did that make sense to you as well? When I was bringing that up, yeah, and and I have the pleasure of doing both men and women. Um, obviously with with the you know with obviously with my hockey background is is coming from the men's side, but also being in you know being able to coach women as well. And I think it's just a hockey trait that most hockey players from the men and women are are very humble. And so what I try to do is I try not to separate the two anymore between men and women. When I talk hockey, I talk both. And I guess that's kind of maybe my 
I don't know what you want to call it. Um, you know, I guess my my way of trying to contribute to the to the women's game is is to just not treat them separately. They're both athletes. They both play a different way. The only difference is that Team Canada men is average height is six two two hundred five, and the average for for uh, the women's is is five eight one fifty. And it's just one of those things that you have to accept as a um, you know when you're in the game is that you're there's just two dyna- two different dynamic of people, but the game's still the same. Yeah. And the people are still the same, and I and I really hope that the women's focus is still the same. And that's, I guess, what I want to see is is that gap bridge. Is when we talk hockey, we're not just talking men and women; we're just talking about the sport of hockey. No, that that's a really really good point, and I'm really happy that you brought that up. You mentioned how you played with with boys as well. I'm trying to figure out. I'm pretty sure it's you. Was it you who played with Matt Duchesne? Nope, wasn't me. Uh, I wish I wasn't that good. Uh, I played junior B for I played junior junior B for three years, and then played junior C for for two years. So I had the junior background, but uh, you know, just didn't didn't have that opportunity. But had to had the. It's funny. I ran into actually Patrick Sullivan growing up as a kid. He's an eighty five like myself. Um, you know, other good players like Kyle Quincy was an eighty five. This is Chris Stewart and Anthony Stewart ninety five or eighty five brothers as well, just from the Toronto area. So just one of those guys like, oh, I played against him or played with him type of guy. Just didn't have the uh, the focus. I realized I was a much better coach when I was younger than I was a player. So I, I, that question I think was for, was for Tara though, because <laughs> I, I, I believe yeah. Sorry, Tara. I mean, my brother Tyler is my brother's name, so I can see where the, the mix up happened. Was, yeah. it, was it you, Tara? That you played, T-A-R-A, Tara, <laughs> that played with Matt Duchesne? It was, yeah. I played with yes, Matt nice. okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. Back in the day, yeah. Okay. He was a year younger than me, but he was good enough then and he's good enough now. He played a year up, and I was lucky to play a year in the Woody Wolves. One of my favorite. Sorry, the Lindsay Wolf. Sorry. One of my favorite moments is him being present for the Sochi game where you guys won, and they made that connection. Um, and he was just jumping up and down. Um, and yeah, getting back to the whole um, like that the, that game. You know, the one thing I got, I brought it up when I had uh, Natalie Spooner on on the show as well. But you know, Mary Philippe scored that goal, and you know, getting back to what I was saying about like being modest and humble. It's like her whole like celebration and reaction was the definition of what we're talking about right here. You know what I mean? Like everyone went crazy, but she kind of made a great play, scored, made a beautiful shot. And then just kind of like, Oh yeah. Just like, well, like this in the corners and then like, you know, I'll help her loose. But it's just like that, that, that's kind of what I was thinking about. You know what I mean? It was such an amazing play. Um, goes down in history um, as one of the greatest, I uh, Tyler's going to like this comment. Not just women's hockey, not not men's hockey. That was one of the best hockey games I've ever seen. Hundred percent, and you really, it really knowing being a part of that team, and I've watched all all the Olympic golds um, for women's hockey to this point, and seeing Marie Filipoulin's reaction and knowing what we went through that year, it really did symbolize our entire team and yeah. everything that we went through, and just it's almost a relief. Because you're at that point, you really, it's hard to explain. You're really doing it for your country and for the game. And to be able to just have that feeling that we did it. And I'll never forget making the team right before um, Christmas. And I was on the bubble going in and I ended up making it. It was one of the best feelings of my entire life. But I can tell you that within 24 hours, the feeling of, oh, holy crap, now we have to win it really does settle in quick. And I can tell you that's exactly part of the reason her celebration was like that, because to put on that, that flag and put on that jersey and represent your country, it really means more than anything. Yeah, that's – I got goosebumps. Like, that's, that's amazing. And, Tyler, the one thing I've noticed about you, and, you know, um, I met you at the CWHL Awards where you were, you know, um, given the award for Coach of the Year. And the one thing – I really, really am fond of of you. Is you're a very passionate guy. You're really, really. Um, uh, you could tell the way you speak, um, the way you interact on social media. There is passion. You love the sport. You love the game. You're you're always about making it. You know, um, making it better. You're all about the evolution. Do you find that your passion makes you a better coach? Oh, absolutely. Because your heart's in it, and you get to do something you love. And I. 
you know, even today I get the, you know, I'm in the hockey business, you know, as a, as a day job and not too many people out there get the, you know, get that opportunity. Right. And, you know, one, you know, I don't, like I said, you don't make, uh, you know, a ton of money doing it. Unfortunately, you're not going to cure cancer or anything like that doing it. But what you're going to do is you're going to allow uh, people to follow their dreams and give them the best opportunity they can. And, you know, not too many people get to do that in their life. They, they go to a nine to five job and, um, you know, and you don't quite get to do what you love. And, you know, now that I get to hang out with, uh, you know, I've met some great people in the hockey business and, uh, and people that are attached to the hockey business and there's no greater sport and no better people in, uh, in the actual sport itself. So, you know, the more we, we grow the game, the more passionate you can be about it, uh, the better everything will be. And just remember to always have fun. And that's what, what it is at the end of the day, it's still just a game. Try not to be too humble while answering this question because I totally know you're going to be really humble and modest, but do you think that their passion and the way you interacted and engaged with the Brampton Thunder all, like, helped them and motivated them to turn around their, their, their season as well? I think my positivity did um, it, to be a little, you know, like I said, a bit selfish. Like I'm, I'm an extremely positive guy. You know, I, I, I'm, you know, I get really into the game and sometimes, you know, being a young guy, that's, you know, and, and again, I don't have a ton of professional experience, you know, being, you know, 30 years old and you try to, you pick up everything you can and, and apply to what, you know, and coach to your personality. And I just don't, I don't have that old school mentality. I have a, I'm a, I'm a player's coach. I believe that the players, they know what they're doing, especially at the professional level. You just give them the tools and let them go. And sometimes I get a little bit too into it, but, uh, but at the same time, <laughs> at the same time though, I think that, you know, 80% of the time it motivates them and 20% of the time they're like, okay, coach, take it down just a notch you know that's just how i am and they uh and they and they uh they responded it i you 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 said that you know you work in hockey and you have um you have a lot of experience of, in recruiting and but is, is coaching where your heart is is coaching something that you want to continue doing if i could make a little bit of coaching i would i mean i was on the i was just on the ice for two hours right now with uh four up and coming you know uh, female hockey players um, that go to my uh, that go to my school. One doesn't, but uh, excellent hockey players up and coming. I mean, the one girl, you know, she scores 105 points in Double A men's boys hockey. Like this, she's she's incredible. She's an 03, and I uh, oh she and she's going to be special, and uh, and a, a couple others as well. So yeah, no, it's a yeah. So I mean, it just as long as being on the ice is where I belong, and uh, you know, as long as I keep working at it, you never know. I'm just, but right now my focus is the Brampton Thunder, and I don't want to leave uh, until they kick me out. <laughs> well, you know, keep winning those Coach of the Year awards, and I'm sure you'll be there <laughs> for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, so, we'll see. Yeah, no, um, but no, I, I just, I, I, sorry, Tyler, I didn't, I don't want to make it just about Tyler, but I like, guess his, his passion is is amazing, and you could, you could see it like. Um, especially like in your in your speech um, at the gala, it was it was awesome, and I was there to see it. And it, was, it was really cool. Um, we're gonna wrap it up soon, but Tara, a, a thing I want to talk to you about is you're an athlete. You have this thing called a phone right here, where you can go on and you can you know go on Twitter and all these social media platforms, and you could you know check out news. Um, See what people are talking about you if you're brave enough. You know, I don't know if uh, <laughs> there, there might be, you know, uh, there's a lot of athletes that are, you know, we had a couple. We Tyler, I don't know if you saw, but we had a couple of, uh, we had three members of the Mock the Wildcats on the show yesterday. I didn't see it, but if uh, if I'm their coach at that level, I tell them get off of all social media. <laughs> well, Connor Connor Garland, who's an Arizona Coyotes prospect, fifth rounder, signed with them, was the leading scorer of the QMJHL two years in a row. Mm. Um, five eight. He says, you know, because I was talking about what I was about to ask Tara about, you know, all the negativity on social media. He was like, well, that's why I don't have it, Pete. <laughs> that's yeah. That was his answer. But Tara, my question is, do you not find it's interesting that you have kind of this platform though, where you could interact instantly with other athletes, let alone hockey players and fans and social media people like myself and our mutual friend Chris Knobloch, who's also a two-time pop alternative guest as well. He's great. He's doing some great things with uh, the, um, with a baseball team right now with the Bees, so I'm really, really happy with it for him. But do you, what do you think about that landscape as an athlete like yourself? I think it's great, especially you look at the growth of the women's game. It's a, it's a great venue to really – spread the word and create awareness. 
it's cool to connect with people like you and um, to really just, I think one of the biggest issues is you look at the, the viewership of the women's hockey gold medal game and half the people watching have no idea where we play in the other three years. And for even opportunities like that, it's, it's a great venue and it's a lot of fun. And I, I'll never forget even like you brought up Matt Duchesne earlier. And as soon as he felt the press release got um, announced about the team, uh, he tweeted right at me saying congrats to my minor hockey league teammates. So kind of connections like that and um, interactions with other hockey players and, and people like yourself to really just enjoy the game, men and women, and to spread the word. It's a great venue. I love it. I think um, what you mentioned, too, about they don't know where you're playing after, you know, watching you at the international. The same thing also happened a lot with the World Juniors as well. People would watch the World Junior Hockey Championship and not realize that they could, you know, it's a lot better now with the sports, uh, the sports net coverage of the Friday Night Hockey CHL, which has been amazing for the sport, in my opinion. But, you know, junior hockey is, is another phenomenal product that, you know, um, it's unbelievable. I do some social media work for the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League. That Memorial Cup final did sting. You know, Rune Ronda had an amazing tournament, but you know, London Knights, Matthew Kachuk. Uh, that was that was that <laughs> was uh, Yeah, you're all smiles, Mr. What did I tell Martin, you? Over what did here, I tell you? They, said they won't lose <laughs> they won't lose a game and they didn't uh, lose. I I, uh, I regret bringing it up now. I knew you were gonna say that. <laughs> Well, Mitch, I'm going to here in London, but maybe. <laughs> oh, I mentioned uh, the, that line's just deadly. It's an NHL line. I, it, no it, it's, a li- it's a line that also doesn't stop. It always, like, produces. I've never seen a line like that, let alone in the NHL, but, like, junior that, let alone junior but the NHL, that just continues. Like, I haven't really seen them off at all, and I've watched a lot of junior hockey this year. And little great goaltending in that final too. They still found ways yeah. to produce. It was just unbelievable. There was good goaltending though for the Runer on the Huskies. Chase Marchand, Brad Marchand's cousin, amazing. Like you know, and it's his last year in the queue. He wants to go pro. He wants it, you know. And and he's proven himself in my opinion. Um, yeah, yeah. And one last thing too, because Tyler, we talked a little bit about CIS uh, last week too, eh? when we had Mark Franch and um, when we had Daniel Deshaies on, we talked about CIS. There is there is a lot of players from the CIS that play in the CWHL, correct? Yep, fair majority, yes. Yeah. There, so there then becomes kind of like a – this – and Tyler, you can answer this too. There's, like there's this kind of like balance, right? Because then you have, you know, the players that have – experience playing at high level international stages and then you have you know the players that come from playing university in canada but then you also have the players that played you know ncaa and we've already established that ncaa and cis is completely different how do you balance that how is that balanced in the league because i i think that's kind of like a unique quality of the league because you're going to develop and have a lot of different players to coach right tyler yeah, I mean, you know, but they're good though. I mean, like, uh, like that's. The oh, thing. I'm not saying I'm not saying they are. I'm just saying they all had different developments, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, but I mean, at the end of the day, they're professionals and they've earned their spot on the club, and you know, and, and every one of them's got their their skill set, whether or not they're Team Canada. I mean, obviously, there's there's a lot of things involved in the Team Canada selection. There's a lot of things involved in, um, you know, even in selection in the CWHL. So as long as you you know, as long as you do your, your pre-scouting and you see who's coming out of the CIS and do your due diligence as a, as a coach or your GM, uh, you know, you'll know who's coming out, whether it's NCAA or, or CIS. Both programs are excellent, and I, and I can't wait to see the growth of the CIS market um, for women's hockey. It's continuing to grow. It's, the, the product is getting better, and I think the coaches and the, and the, and the schools are putting more funding into it, and I think, uh, I think that goes a long way. We heard from a coach. I'd like to hear from a player now. Tara, what do you think about that when we just talked about CIS, NCAA, international stage? I think it's great. And honestly, it's one of the really cool things about women's professional hockey is just the different backgrounds coming into it. And it's such a great dynamic, and it really does make a well-balanced team, not even talking about skill level at all, because like Tyler said, it's it's very it's very even keel. And But it's just to have – the cultures between two countries, um, the different the different backgrounds in terms of your your hockey career, it, it really makes for a fun environment and um, a very diverse and some 
a place where you can really learn from other players. And that's one thing I've been, uh, even with the new league and staying with the Blades for the last year, it's one thing that really was exciting is to, it became more like a local Boston team instead of a hub for all the U.S. players. And to really have that, those roots in Massachusetts and uh, the Northeast, it was, it was a cool experience to really, you know, whether you had girls from Holy Cross, Syracuse, BC, and got to play with some of my rivals. Um, it's in same in Canada. I'm sure they have similar experiences, but it was really cool just to have that diversity on your team. You really learn a lot. Mm -hmm. No, uh, that, that is, that is interesting. And yeah, no, I, I was happy. I was able to squeeze that in because, you know, CIS, uh, me being, you know, um, a Carleton grad, you know, Carleton University's women's hockey team is developing a game better as we go on. But the men's hockey team has been unbelievable as well. And, you know, they went to the University Cup in Halifax as well. So we talked about the the men's more last week. But, uh, yeah, I thank you both for coming on the show. I really, really, really appreciate it. It's, it's always amazing to, you know, on this show, Tower, we have conversations about, you know, social media sports and pop culture and we talk about you know athletes and what they do and how fans respond to it on social media and it's just i am forever grateful that i have opportunities to talk to um amazing accomplished athletes like yourself so thank you so much for taking the time to come on the show tyra really really appreciate it thank you for having me it was a great time and tyler two-time pop alternative guest now how does that feel no it's great and like i said obviously what having watch you on you know, is great. She's a she's a heck of a hockey player, and she's a good leader for Team Canada. And uh, you know, when this thing you know goes live, uh, and the, maybe some young girl sees it, if you want to look up to someone, she's probably one of the ones I'd be looking up to. Absolutely, and that's kind of why I made this show Pop Alternative. My background is in you know uh, communication, social media, and I you know wrote my master's research essay on engagement and social media. I made this as kind of a tool that people can watch because we do have innovating conversations you know about um you know social media sports at the women's game i think that would be really good so the replay will be available on youtube so whatever if tara you want to send it along to anyone you'll, you'll be able to sounds good well this has been pop alternative we thank you for tuning in uh tonight and uh we thank everyone that tuned in yesterday for our mountain wildcat special we do not have a show next week um but uh we will be back uh, in two weeks so you can catch Previous episodes of Pop Alternative on our YouTube page. You can like us on Facebook. You can follow us at. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter. Thank you, Tyler. Thank you, Tara. Have a great night, everyone. Thank you for tuning in to Pop Alternative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Pop Alternative on YouTube. Be sure to like Pop Alternative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter.